make myself more productive. I'm obviously very busy running at you fire, and so anything that I can do to save a little bit of time in my day is definitely something that is important to me. So um, I've gone through you know, tons of articles, video tutorials, talked to lots of people, and uh, you know I've definitely learned some things. I'm sure I have a lot more to learn, but um, you know, definitely have some things that, that I've been passing along to people. And uh, recently, a few people that I know, including my brother who's, uh, who's here today, David, um, have switch from a PC to a Mac. And so, you know, I've kind of gone through with some people some of the things that they can do, but I figured, well, why not run a class and then I can, you know, share with this, this to a lot of people and we can record the class and, and people can, can use this in the future. So, um, the, today's class will run about approximately an hour. Um, hopefully, it won't go too much past 11, um, but there's a lot of stuff in here, so I want to make sure we try to get to everything. Um, not all of this will be Mac specific. There will be a, certainly some applications that will go over that can work on the PC as well. So if you happen to be a person on PC and you're here because you're curious or whatever, um, you'll probably learn a few things today too. Um, one thing to mention, please ask questions throughout the presentation. I want this to be interactive. So you know, definitely put your questions in the chat pod or if you want to come up on audio or video, um, let me do that. We'll definitely have some Q&A uh, uh, Q period at the end so that we can go through um, you know, some things that you might have. So if you've got audio or video questions, it might be best to save them till the end. But um, if something comes up in the middle of class, just raise your hand and definitely pull you up. So, all right. Um, so I'm just going to call out, for those of you who have the PowerPoint presentation, I'm just going to call out which slide we're on. Um, the first is just my Mac history. I think I mentioned most of this already. I switched in 2000, um, March of 2007. Um, spent a lot of time studying personal productivity um, blogs like Lifehacker. If any of you um, have seen the Lifehacker blog before, it's it's fantastic. And there's actually a Mac specific uh, feed that you can get from uh, Lifehacker. So if you want to subscribe to Lifehacker but not get all the stuff because they're very prolific, um, you can subscribe to the Mac specific feed, which is actually pretty cool for giving you new Mac tips. Um, and one of the things that, that I've really, um, in terms of my personal goals um, in the last few months, is I've really been working to reduce my reliance on, on the mouse or on the trackpad. And this sounds a little bit geeky, and, and I'll admit to being geeky in this respect, but um, I've really found that the more that I can learn keyboard shortcuts and ways to, to navigate around the computer on the keyboard, the faster that I can I can you know move around. So there's a few things that I'll be sharing with you guys today, and you know please feel free to bring up other things. Um, hopefully I'll learn some stuff from you guys today too. That would be that would be awesome. So the first thing is 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 talking about learning keyboard shortcuts, and um, there's a couple of things that I'll I'll offer for this that I think will be very helpful. Um, I mean the first is is and this would be something that many of you probably have seen before. But it's a, the link to the um, the list of keyboard shortcuts on the Apple website. So if you haven't seen that before, um, then definitely check that out. One of the things that I would highly recommend is to go ahead and to print that out, and then just put a, a copy of that printout just like right in front of your your visual field when you're on the computer. And that way, if you if you're doing something you're like, oh, what's the keyboard shortcut for that? Rather than having to navigate, find it on the Apple website, you can just look up in front of you and it's there. And after a while, you'll learn most of the keyboard shortcuts and then it'll be pretty straightforward. Um, Claudia, I saw you raised your hand. Did you have a, uh, a question or were you just testing out the, uh, the raise hand feature? I'll wait, I'll wait for your response. I'll keep going. Um, so definitely take a look at those, those keyboard shortcuts um, and, and start to use them as much as possible. Now, one of the things that I've found for people who are switching over to a Mac and trying to learn some of the different keyboard shortcuts is, you know, it's very easy to, to not do that, you know, to just use the mouse for things and, and use the mouse for different menus and whatnot. Um, I've actually found a pretty interesting way to make sure that you um, use the, the keyboard shortcuts as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my computer screen here. Okay, now all of you should be able to see my computer screen, correct? Okay. You guys can all see that? Alright, sweet. So what I'm going to do right now is bring up my system preferences and and just just to make sure this is all working, can you let me know that you can see my system preferences okay? Awesome, cool. 
And if you go in here to universal access within system preferences, and you go to mouse and trackpad, um, what I do when I'm wanting to kind of really geek out and learn the keyboard shortcuts is I go in here and actually set something called mouse keys. And what mouse keys does is it actually allows you to um, ignore the trackpad. So what happens is, and I have it set up here, so when you press the option key five times, it'll turn mouse keys on or off. And I'm not going to do it right now, um, but basically I can hit option five times, and what it'll do is it'll essentially just disable the use of my trackpad. And what that forces me to do is to get around the computer using, you know, only using the keyboard, not using the mouse at all. There are some things that you get to, and you find that, you know what, like I really do need to use the mouse for this. There's some websites, there's some things like that. And then what you can do is just hit option five times, and you're back in, and you can use the mouse again. But it's a really interesting thing to do, and after you use, after you turn off the trackpad for, you know, a half hour or so, like it's amazing how much more you learn about what you can do with the keyboard shortcuts, because you're basically forced to use them versus using the mouse. So it's a little hack, and I spent a bunch of time like trying to figure out how I could do that because I was I just found myself going to the, the trackpad and the mouse quite a bit, and uh, and finally I came across this, and it works perfect because you know you can just turn it on and turn it off very quickly if you want to. One note of caution is I did get into one situation one time where I actually wasn't I couldn't figure out how to turn the trackpad back on, and I couldn't figure out how to get to system preferences without turn you know. So you got want to be a little bit careful about this when you first roll it out, experiment a little bit. Um, but it's a it's a pretty cool little trick, and uh, and I think y'all y'all all dig that. So, all right. So, moving on to um, the next piece today, I wanted to talk about expose and spaces. So I'll go back into system preferences, and within expose and spaces, there are a couple of things that I'll point out to you guys that are pretty cool. Um, what Expose does, and I'm actually not sure that you'll be able to see this on um, uh, your, your side. Um, let me know if you can. But what Expose does is it allows you to have certain triggers using things like um, mouse movements to be able to enable certain things. So I have my Expose set up so that if I go up to the upper right corner of my screen and just take my mouse and I bring it up to the upper right corner, it's going to show all the windows that I currently have available. So, did you guys see that okay? Perfect. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so, that's how I've got mine set up. So, it's a really nice thing to do if you've got, you know, several windows open. Um, you can go up there easily and you can see all the things that you have open. Um, I have mine set where I go to the bottom left or the bottom right corner to show my desktop. So, um, that's um, how I've got mine set up. So, you know, you can do a number of different things. You can have this show, you know, your dashboard. You can have it show certain application windows, a bunch of different things um, based off of that. But Expose is just a nice little thing that you can use to, if you, um, you know, basically, you know, do certain things without having to necessarily um, know exactly what you're doing on your computer. Um, what Spaces is, is Spaces is actually a, a virtual desktop. So um, Spaces is gives you the ability to essentially have, if you're working on a small, um, you know, a small monitor, or you know, you don't have a lot of screen real estate, it basically gives you virtual screens that you can work off of. Now, what I've done with with Spaces is I've set up four um, different uh, virtual um, spaces by default, and then what I've done is is I've set up certain applications to launch in those spaces. Now again, I'm not quite sure if this is going to work properly, if you guys are going to see this on your end. But what I've done, for instance, is, is I've set up, you know, for, for me, I check my Twitter, um, you know, a few times throughout the day. But I don't really want Twitter running in my main work real estate. I don't want it distracting me from the tasks that I'm doing. So what I've done is I've configured twi Twitter, or Twitterific, which is the application that I use to access Twitter, to run in one of my spaces in space three. And then what I can do is, and I've assigned the, the um, command key and the down arrow to get to space three is I can just um, go down to space three, I can check Twitter, and then boom, I can move back up into my regular workspace. And it's not cluttering up my screen. So um, that's a, a cool part of spaces that I, I really like. Um, F11 will get you into spaces so you can see all the various spaces that you have available to you and then you can, you can pull back out of it using F11 again. Um, so I don't use spaces a ton. Um, but I definitely do use it for specific applications, and it's great if I want to have something up and running but not 
not clouding my, my visual stream. Yeah, and Quincy, I don't really know about, uh, about Linux Virtual Desktop, but I'm sure it's probably the same thing. Um, one other thing to mention about screen clutter is there's actually a great um,